Three New Zealanders who died while training in a Lancaster bomber during World War II have been honoured in England. A village in Nottinghamshire has erected a memorial, and it's all thanks to one inquisitive local and her metal detector. Europe correspondent Kim Chisnell reports. When Lady Helen Nall used a metal detector to search her backyard, she didn't find any gold. But what she did find was history. Pieces of wreckage from two Lancaster bomber planes. Once I knew what aircraft alloy looked like and bits of bullets, I knew what I was seeing and just picked them up and kept them all. And they tell a story, the, the fragments. You can see where the aircraft came down. They tell a very sad story. The two planes went down within weeks of each other in the winter of 1945. Fourteen men died, including three New Zealanders. Lady Knoll felt their deaths should be honoured with a memorial, but she wanted relatives of the men to attend its opening. This meant she had to do yet more digging. The relatives were scattered around England, Australia, Canada and New Zealand. They died in front of our house. I couldn't not do it, and particularly once I was in touch with the families. Pilot officer Guy Dunlop from Matamata was behind the controls of one of the planes. His nephew, who was named after him, says the accidents show just how hard it was to fly the bomber planes. It was a survival of the fittest. Yes. You had to be able to you know, come in in those marginal conditions, land a plane. The technology compared to today was, was at best marginal. So uh, they were just, you know, brave young men. That was really all you could say. The quaint village of Hoveringham couldn't seem farther away from New Zealand, really. But the people here remember the men who flew halfway around the world to train here. George Allwood was just four years old when the plane with the New Zealanders on board came down on his father's farm. Everybody in the village heard this Lancaster coming over and they knew it was too low, it wasn't going to make the airfield, and eventually there's one almighty bang. He has what was once the only remaining evidence of the tragic accident, a photo showing his father in the field with the indent of the plane still visible 20 years later. Now, thanks to the work of Lady Knoll, there's a much more permanent reminder on display. Kim Chisnell, Hoveringham, the Green.